Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, and just talk about some of the things that we found going on interesting in the world of Linux, open source, and all the other fun things in between. Fair warning, if you hate humor and or fun, cut the show off now, because, I don't know, sometimes we try to do that. By the way, I'm Vin. That's Jill. She's wondering, like, <laughs> what's wrong with my fiberglass internet and Pedro Mateus <laughs> somehow not Hello. suffering any internet issues all the way across yeah. the pond on the aisles of time. Give it time. Give it time. Yeah. Oh, right. We've been doing this long enough not to come out of the gate and be like, come at me, fate. Fate's like, Dzz. right? Yeah. Oh, dude, pretend he just goes Atlantis on you. I'm like, well, get a boat. Um, <laughs> well, we're all sinking now. <laughs> everyone at home joining us Aww. live. A little bit of a late start, but uh, we wanted to make sure it wasn't going to explode. But hey, we've, we've given it a chance before we get into <laughs> it though Pedro you didn't write anything so come up with something on the spot you've been up to anything new <laughs> uh no not really I've been um basically toying around with KDE Neon to make sure that everything in this box is up and running one thing I noticed today the Intel microcode is installed and since there was that big zombie load thing that was um oh right disclosed recently it's like oh there's an update for the Intel micro why is that installed <laughs> Well, you got to give Intel credit. They're like, hey, you know that thing we said we fixed a couple months back? Uh, yeah, that 10,000 series uh, CPU you're just putting out? Turns out it's vulnerable. <laughs> Intel, you should have made a big... Uh, you, Intel's just like, you're being toxic. Yeah. Don't... It's just, uh, Jelly Bean, what's going on? Oh, well, last week I said I had something cool in the world of Linux that was happening this week. So, yay. So yesterday morning, my chat with Brent Gervais on Brunch with Brent at Jupiter Broadcasting was released. I talked about my animation career, Linux Chicks LA, Scale, and the wonderful Linux community, and a lot more. So make sure to take a listen to that. And thank you so much to Brent. It was just so much fun. I loved it. It was awesome. Did you have a link for that? Nope. Yes. Because uh -uh. <laughs> we could use a link for that. Pedro, the yeah. only way to get the link is to send a self-addressed stamped envelope no. to Jill. I'll put it What's in there. What's a stamp? <laughs> oh, snail mail. That's definitely <laughs> I've been playing around with the router board 3011 UIAS-RM that showed up to my house Friday, mm. to which I went, oh, I have to try to get you working before Saturday and I'm not going to be home. Um, hard work. <laughs> Trying to get that set up. It, it, it's an interesting piece of kit and I have, have no shame in saying I know nothing about networking outside of just like basic home stuff, you know, and do Netgear, Biquity, stuff like that. I, like stuff you can't forget about Cisco when I used to have to deal with that stuff. None oh, of that boy. applies. <laughs> this is... An edge router. This thing is meant to have switches plugged into it, not yep. internet computer stuff. And well, I guess, you know, bonding and all that. But I'm learning about it. We're, we're learning. So I'm basically giving myself a free pass for like the next month. If anything goes wrong, I'm like, yeah, there's this device. But yeah. can't say I necessarily recommend it. Unless you're the type of person who's like, man, SSHing into my router is fun, then you might like it. Um, but I can say it's stupid cheap and it has enterprise features and you can get them used for about 90 bucks. So That's not bad. Nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If, you, if you're not intimidated by something that doesn't have a WAN port, it's like everything's a WAN port if you're brave enough. Um, <laughs> you get to address whichever port you want to. <laughs> but it will let us do things like bandwidth management for multiple growing stuff that we're going to be doing here along with bonding as much as I can throw at it. So good on that. Mm -hmm. So let's get right into some of the stuff that we found going on, starting with Red Hat. Yeah. Red Hat. <laughs> yeah. Red Hat doesn't do anything. It's Red oh, Hat, wow. man. They're old. What, did they finally upgrade to like 2.4 kernel or what? Oh, well, this is actually they're running really... 4.0 now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> so that <laughs> that's funny, Pedro. <laughs> okay, so this is the uh, latest version of RHEL 8.1. And the big news here is it now has live Linux kernel patching. And um, 
for, of course, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.1. And lots of people have been waiting for this in RHEL, like like um, like SUSE has and Ubuntu, and being able to uh, update a machine's Linux kernel while it is live is a much needed feature. And this both saves down on downtime of systems and saves businesses lots of money. So this was very, very important. People have actually been waiting for this for a long time under RHEL. So really, yeah, and really it is awesome. Red Hat Enterprise <laughs> Linux. Uh, yes. Production is their whole shtick. So this is a very welcome <laughs> addition. Took them a little while, but hey, it's here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's Red Hat, though. I mean, d d d yeah. <laughs> you, it'll happen. It's just who's going to blink first. But <laughs> fine, I suppose we get. I guess we have to. Uh... <laughs> I'm down with it. I'm happy with it. And now that I can run off and well, the real time, I know it's like, I don't trust it. Yeah. <laughs> it's old, yes. but I know it's a good future. But now, now that you have your Red Hat 8.1 system installed, you can go, oh man, I can't afford these licenses. So you install CentOS 8 and you turn it into a desktop. And that's what our next story is covering uh why would you want to do that um i'm just gonna go ahead and say it we're gonna get this out of the way don't use CentOS as a desktop unless you're being <laughs> forced to uh, if you're under duress like i'm sorry but, uh, this comes from all this is gonna be in our show notes and this is a site that's covered from since six seven and everything else basically what you need to get everything together you know like vlc gem uh web browsers basic basic stuff and the repositories now steam steam right? yeah the bare essentials but i, I definitely want to say um there's no advantage to be had running scent as a desktop mm -hmm. you're not going to encounter that in the <laughs> wild and if you do run uh yeah. <laughs> chrome and sky I, I, this is good that this exists and i'm going to say for this reason this reason only you might be stuck with this at work somehow. Mm -hmm. it That's could be the thing. It, it's workstations. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, yeah. it could also be work <laughs> laptops. You could run into a very real situation yes. of, hey, I don't want a Mac and I'm not running Windows. I want the Linux option. You're like, guess what our only Linux option is? <laughs> There's a ThinkPad and it has Scent on it. Mm -hmm. Have fun. <laughs> So there's that. Um, have you ever, yeah. outside of like learning, uh, bothered with, I, I was very, listen, if <laughs> Scent 8 was out when I was putting together this box, uh, that's what I'd be running right now. Uh, instead of that, I went to Debian. But out, outside of like use cases, I, no, I don't know. It's, yeah. Pedro, are, are you dying to install Scent? You can put it on a laptop? No, no. That, I mean, if you want something that makes Debian stale, I mean, stable, uh, look up to date. Scent is where you go. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Pedro, you I can... sound like an Arch user. It didn't ship with it. Therefore, it's on pot. I, I'm installing the 5.3 kernel later this afternoon on Debian stale. Uh -huh. <laughs> but yeah, the I do see the appeal in the, having like the super, super LTS uh, in the RPM world. It, Granted, you can go for Susie, but between uh, going with Scent on the desktop and Susie, I'll take Scent any day. Jill, so, what yeah, would you rather have, yeah. Jill? Desktop would you rather have Scent or Gentoo? Or Gentoo? Um, uh, probably Scent. <laughs> Although I do like Gentoo as well. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I thought this was a really great guide for starting, um, for using a desktop on CentOS 8. You know, it was very easy easy to follow. And that's always been a, a challenge to get the desktop working on CentOS and, and Rail. Yeah, and this is especially good for all those animators out there using Maya, Moto, Blender, RenderMan, etc. Because that's what all of the studios are using is RHEL and CentOS to do animation. And yes, now that Blender 2.88 is officially supported on RHEL and CentOS 8, it makes it a lot easier to install Blender. <laughs> that used to be a pain. And... Um, you know, usually when I'm doing animation, I usually use the light, lighter weight window managers on Scent for more memory efficiency using animation apps and then do my rendering in console. So 
So the desktop, it doesn't have to be GNOME, <laughs> which <laughs> takes up a lot of memory, but but it is it, it is good for, you know, the average user to use. <laughs> and I will say this about uh, Dead OI Meadow. Uh, this website, uh, if you want to talk about controversial Linux distro review websites, this is the one most people are talking about. It's been around a long time and the dude has been mm -hmm. covering just about every distro uh, for the longest yeah. time. And it's like, oh, it's a article from Dead OI Meadow in the show notes. Let's go have a look. Oh, it's about installing GNOME 3 in Steam <laughs> on CentOS. All right. Yes. <laughs> well, then again, at the end of the day, do you really want to be the person that keeps track of controversy about Linux distribution spend? <laughs> I'm like, you know what? Yeah. You need a hobby. I'm just going to say. <laughs> Void Linux Alpha Image is available, but mm -hmm. what's new about this? Well, it's uh, Void Linux has been around for a little bit, and Project Trident has also been around for a little bit, but Project Trident of BSD fame uh, is uh, actually mm -hmm. moving to Linux. And, well, uh, they're using Void Linux as a base. They've put out uh, this first uh, alpha image is, as they say, it, it's basically just Void Linux with uh, the Lumina desktop, and the rest of the Trident stuff they will be adding at a later date. So basically, if you don't know what Trident is, imagine uh, it's based on TrueOS, which is a rolling uh, release of FreeBSD. Mm -hmm. So if TrueOS is like a rolling release Debian, Trident is Ubuntu. And yeah. now they are moving to Linux, which makes that uh, whole analogy that much more adequate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this this looks like yeah. Aquaman's Linux. <laughs> well, it's uh, very focused on security, like your BSDs often tend to be. And what they're trying to do is basically, or what they were trying to do with BSD was to have something that was easy to install and easy to set up and very focused on privacy and security, et cetera, et cetera. And now they've basically had it with the, the BSDs. It's like, yeah, we're just moving to Linux because there's more happening there. Yeah. I'm not mm -hmm. going to pick on BSD, but yeah, I mean, it, no, 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 no. with that folk, with that much focus on security, <laughs> some things tend to, you know, not do anything. <laughs> well, so, hey man, there's something to be said about security through obscurity. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are atop our Linux soapboxes shouting yeah. about other things being <laughs> obscure, right? Oh, that's right, baby. <laughs> oh, man, I was using Linux before it was mainstream like it is today. Um, you can use Linux to power your home and not in a frightening mm -hmm. and or horrifying manner, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Well, it, I mean, it depends on how you feel about the color uh, slightly off-white with uh, some red buttons and a red lever. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, it's uh, the open source smart home or Kendall smart home, as they call themselves. Uh, it is a smart hub, uh, smart home hub and the associated devices, because it's not just a hub, um, specifically focused on privacy to the point where they will actually uh, fuzz your uh, internet connection with Don't garbage lie to me. and gibberish. Don't lie to me. Every one of those devices look like a bad 3D render. But they're not. D they're not. They're 3D <laughs> printed. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, it, they will outright fuzz I'm just saying, your tell ISP. Me if, you did, if you saw that in a Kickstarter, you'd be like, it's a 3D render. Yeah, if you didn't see it in the video right. and like uh, right. people actually mm -hmm. interacting with it, yeah. I am not knocking <laughs> on it at all. I think that's a very interesting aesthetic, but that jumped out at me. I was like, that doesn't look real. Oh, it is real. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but it was clearly just printed out directly from the 3D renders. And yeah, the, they do everything about privacy, and you can see in the video that they're actively trying to like disguise all the smart home stuff. And yeah, they will uh, outright try to confuse your ISP uh, by just filling it with garbage calls. They're trying to disguise to... stuff the same way you do, like yeah. you just spill something on the floor, you put a towel on top of it, and you're like, ah, you don't know it's there. <laughs> But why is the no? It's just an art piece that's on hey, my thing. No and why is there a wire the IoT to... device behind the curtain? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
But yeah, uh, open source smart home is uh, is a good idea, mostly because what we have right now um, is our choice of wiretaps. Do we want Amazon wiretap, Apple wiretap, or the Google wiretap? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I actually, this is this is really wonderful, you know, to be able to create a self-hosted smart home is uh, so needed right now. And um, I love the design of the devices. Uh, actually, I think that would be cool for my, uh, for me and Steve in the future when I get a Buckminster Fuller a geodesic dome for our backyard. <laughs> and this would be awesome. <laughs> Make a smart home <laughs> geodesic dome. <laughs> Where are you at on IoT, Pedro? To, to how, how far have you, like even inadvertently ended up getting? Mm -hmm. I'm uh, setting up Raspberry Pis to like control yeah. just lights or to like flip on a switch every now and then, but that's about it. Joe? Yep. Yeah, I'm not, I don't, I just, I can't get into the Amazon and Google uh, universe of, of, uh, you know, um, home devices. I, for security reasons. Um, I have played with the Raspberry Pi in the, in the open source version of, uh, amazons um and that is really cool but honestly for my lights we just use traditional timers you know mechanical timers <laughs> so you yeah. know it's <laughs> i think for me at the end of the day I, I don't have a lot of iot stuff i really don't just because i consider it lazy um yeah <laughs> but then again I, I cannot in with clear conscience go i'm worried fiercely about my privacy while i'm carrying around an android device i'm like any alphabet yeah. agency in any country can light that thing That's... up anytime they want. Let's just be real. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I went looking around the house because I was looking at, you know, the candle smart home. I was like, well, what about thermostat? Because I have two Nest thermostats. And hey, man, they might be privacy vampires. But you know what? I got up this morning. I'm like, Burr, it's cold. At one hand, reach yeah. up to a tablet, open the Nest up. I'm like, boop, cut on. That's what I use it for. Uh, I do have some Wi-Fi bulbs. I think I have like four or five of those. But yeah, man, like I, I don't know what else. I have an Alexa, but it's not hooked up to anything. Mm. <laughs> if, if I told Alexa to do something, it would tell me to go pound sand, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't think of like any smart. I mean, the thermostat I looked at, the parts list is pretty decent. I don't know if I necessarily want to tango with something that, yeah, I just don't want to have to ever explain that to my home owner's insurance. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, I would be embarrassed to call them and be like, you know what? I deserve this. I'm just going to get this one out of pocket. Um, pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I'm down with that. Mm -hmm. What do we have up next? Oh, Chrome OS. Uh, yes. So, yeah. Chrome OS 78. Uh, it's, uh, it's been released, but... You know, this being Chromebooks, it may be a while for your particular vendor to get off their posteriors and actually do something and push it out to the Chromebooks proper. Uh, the new version that comes with virtual desktops, because, I mean, it's been Linux-based since day one. Why didn't they have those from the get-go? Uh, separate yes. OS and browser settings, which is odd, but I guess at that point, uh, on that same thought it's like oh i guess they are further uh, further distancing themselves from like the whole browser as an os concept and just having that no this is a serious operating system it happens to be running basically entirely off of chrome but it is still a uh, true operating system in the full sense of the word uh the they say that uh, 9 to 5 Google says that you should keep an eye on your Chromebooks uh, in the coming weeks. I've been basically refreshing the uh, Acer R11 Chromebook that I have. It's like, yo, we're getting an update anytime soon? Because I've been desperate to try and get some actual performance mm -hmm. out of the Linux apps. And that's yeah. still not there. That did very much not there yet. <laughs> mm. Yeah, well, the good thing is, is that uh, Chrome OS 78... Um, backs up uh, Linux apps and files, and they can be mm -hmm. saved to local storage, external drive, or Google Drive. And 
What's nice is that copy can be restored when setting up a new computer. Yay, like all other, like their other, like their Android devices and whatnot. So that makes sense for Chrome OS Linux apps. And Christini uh, GPU support is now enabled by default, making your experience a lot more clean and zippy. So that's really, really good news. One thing I mm -hmm. like that they're going to be rolling out is it will tell you when your Chromebook is going to be EOL'd. Mm -hmm. Yes. And mm -hmm. uh, Google have, uh, there was a bit of news that they have expended the supported life of the current generation of Chromebooks. It's like, y'all get another year and then we'll see. Mm. <laughs> we got to think, you know, because they always have the flagship Chromebooks that are like over a grand. Pixels. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it, it doesn't matter. As, as somebody who's bought flagship Nexus devices, they're like, yeah, whatever, torch them. So yeah. Keep mm -hmm. that in mind. No, I I bought that R11 because it's like, okay, I want a Chromebook and I want something that's really nice and not stupidly expensive. Mm -hmm. That one was basically mm -hmm. what every single website said. Yeah, this is the one you want to get. <laughs> what I'm really looking forward to is I just hadn't got around to it. We needed some other stuff is getting that Acer Chrome tab for the studio because mm -hmm. being yeah. able to run multiple apps, the I can get away with more than this repurposed Android tablet. Yeah. That, mm. That's as close to a Chromebook as I'm going to get. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, if you ever catch me with like that thing with a keyboard attached, just take me out. Something's went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so just call the police because you've been kidnapped and someone's telling you to play it cool. Uh, it's, it's <laughs> get, get the church, man. Police aren't going to be much use. Um, <laughs> hey. Freddy Cat from afar. What is it? Yes. So, uh, Freddy Cat uh, is an interesting service. Uh, it basically allows you to uh, follow a bunch of different people and a bunch of different companies across a bunch of different social platforms without having to sign up for any of those uh, social networks. Uh, yeah, the, their big thing is like, okay, you don't want to create accounts for Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, Instagram, what have yous. Well, you can just feed everything into Freddy Cat. There's extensions for Firefox and for Chrome, and you can also uh, basically build it yourself. Uh, the and then just start feeding it. Okay, I want to follow this person on this network, this person on this network, or the same person across multiple different networks, and it'll let you do all of that from a single place, which is nice, I think. <laughs> well, um, <Yay. laughs> my only, I get what the intended use for this is, but Jill, what, what did I title the story? <laughs> Distributed stocking. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh well like pedro said i think it's nice to have have um not to have to log on to follow feeds calm down That's stocky actually... mcstalker pants um... <laughs> <laughs> and um honestly i liked having a unified notification area in my browser that doesn't pop up whenever there is a new post and i can check when i went to and I always have browser notification pop-ups turned off because they are so annoying. But this is nice because you can, you know, check it just when you want to. And I have actually been using the Freddy Cat plugin uh, to follow YouTube and Twitter streams, and I'm enjoying it actually qu quite a bit. I'm going to continue to use it. And also kudos on the art design, layout, and colors of the website. Very nice. Very, very pastel. good job. Very professional. So but much pastel. <laughs> yeah, it, it looked like <laughs> the mid-90s walked into that website and fell over dead. <laughs> oh, but the Freddy Cat logo is so cute. It's a cat. <laughs> yeah, it's a cute It's a square cat. Kitties. Cats are evil. <laughs> two, two modern the gateways kitties. to hell. Um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, it, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> it, it's definitely a thing, but I could see that being... that. It's one of those things, you know, like that's for, that's really cool. That's great. That could help people do, and it's going to be used for the wrong thing. Um, well, of course it is. I mean, yeah. that's everything on the internet, right? Welcome to the internet, yeah. kids. Um, <laughs> you put out so. a really useful service and everyone will use it for the wrong things. 
<laughs> this is true. <laughs> Hashtag chat roulette. Uh, the register. Anyway. Yeah. Indian today now stands for now pay me. No, it means for, hey, man, I need six gigs of depths for this one little thing I'm trying to install. That's what it really stands for. Um, but they had an issue because, you know, kind of ads started showing up when people were doing NPM install on things. Well, the maintainers, they've kind of rolled in and they're like, yo. We got to get this sorted. And they've come up with a better solution than nothing at all because they kind of went scorched earth on that. Like, you do not do this. And I was like, man, okay. Or, you know, the spammy stuff that had the internet. And I think rightfully everyone's like, I don't want to have to deal with this when I'm installing stuff. So now, mm -hmm. what, what would you call this, Jill? Is this like an opt-in type deal? Yeah, I think it's definitely opt-in because you have to type it out to get to the URL um, of the project to, um, you know, donate money. And I think this is actually a brilliant way to do that. And it gets rid of those uh, visually annoying ads. So yes. Is, and it's the yeah. unified way to do that. And you won't yeah. have like mm -hmm. 200 different competing monetization schemes going on in NPM alone. And yeah, like you said, Ven, is it <laughs> spam? <laughs> Just, yeah. oh, uh, I'm going to have to install like 200 different um, dependencies to build this one thing. And every single one of them was going to spam me with an ad that I have to hit uh, return on. It's like every single one of them. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. They're going to get creative, man. We could add some like ASCII animation. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. I think that is exactly why the NPM people went, nope. No. <laughs> Put the kibosh on that right now. <laughs> Good job. Okay. Uh, Yay. So I, I posted this on Twitter with uh, a, a very simple title of This Exists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is, it, this is a simple Mac KVM. So yeah, getting Mac OS to work in a virtual machine with KVM, KVM acceleration can be a tricky and definitely tedious process until this came along, uh, the Mac OS virtual machine in QMU. And with a little QMU knowledge, uh, know-how and setting up a partition and configuration, you can get Mac OS 10 running quickly by running two Mac OS simple KVM scripts. And it it worked actually really beautifully and fast. It was the fastest I ever got a Mac OS image installed in a virtual machine. And that includes on VirtualBox and VMware Player. So I was really impressed by it. And it ran really fast. Mm. It really yep. worked really, really well. And the thing that they do is uh, the mm -hmm. install script, it basically pulls down the ISO, turns it into the image file that you need. It does everything like the really horrible mm -hmm. stuff. If you've ever tried to set up a uh, Mac OS VM, it's horrible. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it does all of that in the background. And then all you have to do is tell QEMU to create yourself the disk image for where mm -hmm. the virtual hard drive is going to be and then launch the system with a couple of uh, flags that they also uh, show up in the GitHub page. And this is a big one. Uh, if you <laughs> don't want to uh, have to figure all that out uh, from the command line and you like to use Vert Manager because GUI, yes. <laughs> you can do that too. You, they even Yay. give you just like make.sh dash dash add. Done. Yes. <laughs> But why, though? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to run Adobe... sometimes you need... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you want to run some Adobe uh, products, um, I, I run them under Wine, but, yeah. but you can... You answered that know. question next. Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> yes, yes, but a lot of people prefer to run it in Mac OS rather than I understand Windows. people are dumb, Joe. You don't have to explain this to me. You can run it in Wine. <laughs> and sometimes dumb people have uh, certain positions in certain organizations, <laughs> yeah. and they insist on using their MacBooks if, if at work exactly. when uh, they're told <laughs> not to, and then we are expected to... Uh, Fix the issues that they run into. And what, what would running <laughs> yeah. Mac OS and a VM fix? Uh, actually getting uh, to replicate the issue and seeing exactly what's causing yeah, it because that person is not going to be able to tell you anything. 
about yeah. anything. So to it's help like troubleshooting and debugging a <laughs> Linux game in a VM from Windows. Thank <laughs> you. Except it's Up next, actually um... more uh... <laughs> 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 contrived. <laughs> Aw. So this is awesome. This is a shortwave radio. And personally, I've always enjoyed having a dedicated radio player app and shortwave, which is an on its first public beta and the successor to Gradio is definitely one of the best. It's really easy to use. And right when you launch it, it asks you, do you want to import your files from Gradio or, or um, search for radio stations? And the database is actually really, um, it had everything in there, even all the the hard to get uh, no, stations didn't. that I listen to. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, the, all Portuguese the, all radio the... stations were not oh. there. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> well, I guess that is an exception. <laughs> so it had all my kraut rock and ambient uh, synth music. So, but shortwave's killer feature and one I've always wanted is the ability to easily save individual songs, including its metadata for listening later. And in fact, when you listen to a radio stream, it is automatically recorded in the background so you can save songs afterwards. All you have to do is hit a little download button and it saves it in your download folder, the song with the title. It's really awesome. And this beats all the years of recording radio streams and XMS and Audacious and then spending lots of time splitting up the songs and naming them. That was always a pain and time consuming. So shortwave you know, uh, solves all this. Mm. And, um, you know, it includes all the important Gradio features. And uh, like I said earlier, you can import your data um, into uh, shortwave. So it's a win-win yep. all the way. I'm going to be using this a lot. <laughs> well, for those of us, uh, well, I, I'm glad that you're so gung-ho on piracy. Uh... <laughs> no, no. Oh. Yes, that's what you just described, Jill. Yeah, yes, yes, point. but a lot of my music <laughs> like, is so rare, you can't and you get it. And you didn't even start, you're like, well, here's how I used to pirate before I went this year. <laughs> Yes, put it in the past. No. Distance yourself from it. <laughs> 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 it's a pretty I cool thing, man. Uh, and, yeah. uh, you know, hey, it's got flat pack, so you can try it out. You don't have to build it. You don't have yep. to worry about it. Yes. Just go get it from Flat Hub. Like, boom, <laughs> see if it works. If yeah. it's your thing, yar, baby, yar. So I yeah. can tell you for a fact that, yes, the flat pack does work because that's how I tried it. Right. Uh, but yes. it's, um, yeah, I, I went looking because as someone who set up a little desktop thingy to play Portuguese radio stations back in Windows, I was like, okay, uh, can I just have the Portuguese radio stations? And I look through the database. There's a couple of them in there, but most of them are just not. I so, don't know. I, yeah. I'm kind of interested in Strider. He, he just like and warned everyone that he's about to throw a radio. So, um, all right. Good on you, buddy. Hey, man, we got some news. Are you going to launch it some rockets? No. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to launch it in joy because, hey, Microsoft. Oh, Linux. so. Yes. yes. So This one I did not see coming. <laughs> yes, I was surprised too. So last week we talked about Microsoft Edge coming to Linux. And now Microsoft Defender Advanced Threat Protection Antivirus is coming to Linux next year. Uh, this was also announced at the Microsoft Ignite conference um, this year in Orlando. And, you know, actually, you know, and, and, and it hurts me to say this a little bit. Actually, Microsoft Defender is one of the better antivirus packages for Windows and Mac. So this makes sense from a business point of view to protect their Azure cloud infrastructure. <laughs> and Microsoft having to create a container to protect Office 365 from viruses is actually both brilliant and pathetic at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, uh, it you know, it, it uh, they have a, a plugin that helps protect your Office 365 files, and it used to only work on Edge, and now it's it's coming to the other browsers. So that's good as well. <laughs> 
Well, it has to kind of come to Chrome on accounts of, you know, Edge <laughs> yes. Chromium. But yes. um, the last thing that Linux as a platform needs is stories like those of MacBooks being used in Windows environments as uh, zombie servers to infect all the Windows machines around them. And as someone who has to deal with ATP at work, Mm-hmm. You know what? There's worse. I have seen yeah. much worse when it comes to uh, malware protection, and mm-hmm. I wouldn't go so far as to say it's the best, but it's one of the better. I've ones. seen much yeah. worse. <laughs> uh, it is uh, <laughs> ATP yeah. is manageable, and the web interface that they have is actually makes it very easy to pinpoint exactly what went wrong on whose machine and at what time. Mm-hmm. And- <laughs> Welcome to the brave new Very world. Good. I mean, as much as uh, everyone's like, ah, it's horrible, which I agree, it's buggers off. Come on. Uh, mixed environments. That's the reality these days. You know, you're not going to see, yeah. I mean, if you can see <laughs> yeah, Linux in the shop, true. it's also going to be, you know, you're going to have Macs and they're going to have a lot of Microsoft stuff in there because they've been spending money to make sure they're in there and they're still fighting for it. So having this tool available, I do not believe it's necessarily <laughs> mm-hmm. a bad thing. Yes. No, 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 it really isn't. So it's really strange, strange, strange yeah. times we live in. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere, Balmer just had an aneurysm and he's chasing a kick. He's still chasing that kick. <laughs> and still sweating profusely. It is. Developers, developers, developers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to dive into a slice of pie. But before we do that, a little bit of shameless salt promotion. If you want to support our nonsense each and every week, there's a bunch of ways to do that with Patreon, Libra Pay. We get a merch store. We got shirts. They're not as cool as my sweater, but hey, man, PayPal. We got a wish list for the studio. Jordan's got one. Pedro's got one. Jill's got one. We even take magic internet money mm-hmm. that allows us to stay loud, live, and independent. Come to you each and every week and podcast form. We're on the YouTubes and all that. It is kind of fun. Mm-hmm. We do thank each and every one of you for that. And if you got a minute, be like, mm-hmm. hey, man, no, I'm going to sign up. You can spare like four quarters a week. It helps us out greatly a lot yeah a lot (laughs) yes as i always say and i don't joke around i mean doing a show at this size and especially Mm -hmm. like schemecast weekly without but first you know it's like hey we're about to tell Mm -hmm. you about this but first um Mm -hmm. i don't i don't want to have to get to the point of having to do that and uh everyone's been gracious enough to keep us from doing that so i think we're gonna keep trying to right yeah And if you (laughs) join us on Patreon, we get a couple of rewards for that. You get some early access to a gang of stuff, access to our Discord. Um, If you like what we do, we hold a production meeting an hour before the show on Saturday that we invite everyone to come hang out in and share your thoughts, hints, allegations, and things better left unsaid. (laughs) Oh, and you get your name in the credits, which the credits are going to be wrong this week. Because I was busy. (laughs) You have been warned. (laughs) You have been warned. Maybe we can afford some better art too. But until then, (laughs) a slice of of paint. I mean, pie. Pie. Pink pie, baby. Uh, Same thing. Wall candy. Uh, Detecting people with a raspberry pie, a thermal camera, and machine Mm -hmm. learning. That's right. Ceiling pie is watching you do something. Predator flashbacks, Mm -hmm. man. I. (laughs) <laughs> well what's really the point of this pager other than i just want to have like a f- little baby not fleer ca- i want it to look like a fleer camera and i want to scream get to it a choppa it's basically this person's uh attempt at doing some machine learning on the raspberry pi despite everyone else on the internet going you have more powerful processors and gpus if you don't uh, stay with the prototype toy boards. I, I'm just going to say I would not put a gun in this thing's hand looking at yeah. the um... Yeah. <laughs> so uh, one of the things I found really interesting uh, in what he says is like, okay, so I tried two different cameras, like a regular, uh, regular optical camera and a thermal camera. And with the optical camera, uh, uh, the most that he could uh, get was like 91% accuracy in detecting the presence of people. What? The th- Yeah. 91% on the mm-hmm. optical camera. On and, the okay, thermal we're, camera. We're, we're mm-hmm. looking at this right now, though. Um, That's the thermal camera. Yeah. yeah. On the thermal camera, he Here's got 99%. Camera. Yeah. 99% accuracy in detecting whether or not a person is there. 
And the other interesting bit about the thermal camera is if you see that little uh, yellow bit on the bottom right of the pictures, mm -hmm. that is the heat coming out of the Raspberry Pi CPU. <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's causing just that little bit of interference. <laughs> I, I, I would take a bet against trying to sneak past this thing. Yeah, no, 99% uh, accuracy on a thermal camera. It's like a really yeah. low-res um, uh, camera, too. It's like 640 by 480. Oh, yes. And, yeah, it 99% accurate. It will detect, no, that's a person, that's a person, that's a person, that's the heat off coming, coming off of the what Raspberry Pi, that's a person. What I would like to find out that's is how does this thing deal with a completely <laughs> static background? I mean, what exactly is it, you know... Able to pick it up. Doesn't mention that in the, uh, yeah. the article. Because, <laughs> you know, when I see something like this motion detect detection, I'm like, mm -hmm. go get me a fan. Watch this. <laughs> it's like a fan and something really hot. <laughs> Pour some water on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Aww. I mean, that, I think this falls into that category of like, that'd be something to play around with on a weekend, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, definitely <laughs> it, it's really not that expensive so yeah <laughs> thermally detect your cat yeah and you can you yeah. can have it turn, <laughs> turn on and off the lights like we were talking about the smart home earlier this could be used in that yeah, yeah. it sees <laughs> a person walking into a room it goes oh that's a person lights on it sees the yeah. cat walking into a room okay that's the cat <laughs> lights stay off <laughs> mm -hmm. then the cat just pees on it <laughs> 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 Yeah, don't put it in your cat's bed. It's, it's just what a cat does, man. <laughs> hey, man, tell us uh, what your cat's up to. We got an easy way to do that. <laughs> Absolutely. The best way to do that is to uh, actually yank out that parasite that's now growing in your brain from uh, being a cat owner and sending it to us uh, by, a, I don't know, snail mail, uh, <laughs> bringing that back. Or you can just tell us about it on Linux Gamecast Weekly. Uh, no, you can tell us about it on LinuxGamecast.com. The contact button, there's a forum. Dash weekly yes. forward slash org. <laughs> <laughs> meow, meow. <laughs> and yeah, uh, you fill out the forum, make sure you send to LWDW. There's a little show selection box that you uh, pick which show you, you want to send your feedback or your hate mail to. Or if you're looking for some relationship advice, you can ask Jordan. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. <laughs> we offer that particular service too. <laughs> I also yeah. threw this out there. Uh, <laughs> Like maybe a link or a description of like a project or something like, hey, man, I'd love to come talk to you. Be careful with that. You'll trigger the spam golem and it do doesn't play around. Um, uh. I had to give it a mention last week because a developer had to go out of their way. And they're like, by the way, this thing thinks I'm a spam bot and includes everything I say don't include on that page. I'm like, no, you are. Um, that or you can't read. So please, please. For the love of robotic kitties everywhere, keep that in mind. Aww. <laughs> so we talked about something that I looked at yes. and immediately went, I don't remember talking about that, Aww. but Pedro does. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, I do. So we talked about Myo Linux. Uh, it was, I think, in episode 160, 61. 60? Okay, cool. I wasn't that far mm -hmm. off. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, the developer behind Myo Linux sent us some uh, feedback. I just found this, and I thank you again for mentioning my Linux. By the way, Pedro, yes, no, that is my name. Uh, I was really, 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 really <laughs> offended about the Crunchbang comment the first time. Lol, 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 lol. Smiley face, uh, tongue out face. Uh, you guys have too much fun. It's a joy to watch your channel. How dare you? Uh, thank you, Jill, for giving Mayo a chance. I really appreciate it more than you know. Thanks again and take care. Just subscribe. Should have done it earlier. Yes, you should have. Uh, so, yeah, I stand by what Aww. I said because, <laughs> yeah, if you're going to offer a distribution that is basically Debian with Openbox, that's what Bunsen Labs is there for. It's the, like I said at the time, the continuation of uh, Crunchbang. Mm -hmm. um, Says the, only... says the guy running Ubuntu with KDE pre-installed, calling itself a distribution. It, it, yeah, there's a significant difference. No. <laughs> there's a reason it's not an official spin. It it's not an official enough. spin. <laughs> ah, no, actually, the creator got 
kind of, you know, butted heads with the uh, Ubuntu uh, board. So, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, the... <laughs> what did he do, install what? a flat pack? Uh, no, he refused to abide don't, by... Don't, um, honestly don't care. Um, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, the... The big thing about Myo Linux is that it lets you, uh, it, the thing was, it lets you, like, set up your own partitions. In fact, it expects you to, because it mm -hmm. doesn't do that automatically. And it's like, the whole distribution itself is built on making it your own, out of the box. And I guess, yes, if you did offer some part automatic partition uh, setup thing, it would sort of defeat the purpose a little bit. But I'd take that any day, honestly. Oh, well, yeah, so this was the lightweight dev one distro we talked about in March. Yes, and I still have it running on one of my laptops. In fact, I, it's the one I used yesterday to do my show notes, ironically enough. So <laughs> that that was awesome. And I've been really enjoying it. Um, just it runs nice and fast on a, a very old laptop, just runs beautifully. And I've always loved these, you know, do-it-yourself distros. And uh, Debian is one of my favorite distros for doing that. So, de so uh, Mayo is perfect. <laughs> I'll just keep running Debian because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you don't I want mean, to be free is of System D. <laughs> no, Jill. I like my stuff to work. <laughs> I'm not a hipster. I'm not going to cut off my nose to spite my face. <laughs> oh, I actually got into uh, Arthur and posted a link in Discord earlier today about the whole System D thing and how many people are using SysV in it. Mm -hmm. And I, mm. I basically went to the top of the thread and I started reading the whole thing. It's like, wow, all right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right now, the the, the only way you're going to stop System D currently is with a time machine. So pretty much, yeah. The, the only people. <laughs> arguing about that online at this point or the people who are going to go to the next thing to argue about online because that's what they do they are yeah. void shells of creatures that need to argue on the internet and this yeah. just happens to be their thing but we got to get out of here so mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen we bid you later ah <laughs> see ya <laughs> <Those Yay>. credits. <laughs> yes I, I, <laughs> they're not even the right size <laughs> oh my <laughs> they're not the right size they're not in the middle of the screen yeah <laughs> and they're in the wrong show <laughs> <laughs> but hey the, it's this like bit is still everything relevant. i described before i did this at the beginning yes. of the show <laughs> There's our, our beautiful patrons, our executive producers, and our producers. We love you all. And yes, that producer <laughs> list keeps on growing, and it's every amazing. single one of you are awesome. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know Yay! why you thought this was a good idea, but we certainly appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! I don't know, my brain's still kind of pissed off at me about the router thing. Oh. <laughs> well, you did a great job, Then It all worked well. Of course I did a great job, Jill. I don't have that stuff. <laughs> yes, I know you don't. <laughs> and I'm very happy that halfway through the show, my return video came back to beautiful. So it was a internet issue. Well, with this router, <laughs> I can cut your bend with mid-show, too, so... Oh. <laughs> Ven can actively mess with you. Frank! I what are you doing correct. here? Shouldn't you be in choir practice? Well, what I are you doing? Man, I thought we were going to get a new word added to the English language. Dang it. <laughs> Almost. Almost. Oh, we were so almost. close. Oh, so there's close. the Death Star. Frank and the Death Star go hand in hand. We love you. Bye bye.